Confirm for me that you are with me. Confirm for me that you are with me. Fantastically. All right. So, powerfully, rules that we need to follow to accomplish our dreams. The golden rules that we need to follow to accomplish our dreams. Rule number one. You have to set goals that motivate you. You have to set goals that will motivate you. If you really want to achieve success in business, you have to set the kind of goals that will motivate you. And how can your goal motivate you? How can your goal motivate you? The first thing you need to do, when you set goals for yourself, it is important that they motivate you. Your goals should motivate you. This means making sure that they are important to you and that there is a value in achieving them. So don't just say, at ah, this month, I will just recruit 20 people. I will recruit 30 people. This month, in fact, no matter the matter, this month was not go like that. What exactly are you focusing on that will motivate you this month? That's the question. What exactly are you focusing on to motivate you to be able to achieve those goals that you desire? You know? Now, look at this, everybody. If you have a little interest in the outcome, or they are irrelevant given the larger picture, then the chances of you putting the work to make them happen will be slim. If you have a little interest in the outcome of what you want to achieve, and or they are irrelevant, or they are irrelevant given the larger picture, then the chances of you putting in the work will be slim. Take for instance, in DJ Africa, when you recruit a new partner, you get for yourself 20,000 naira. Are you a kind of person that you say, how much is 20,000 naira? How much is actually 20,000 naira? Am I no more than 20,000 naira? If you are that kind of person, automatically. And at the end of the day, they see you and you are saying, I will recruit, I will recruit. She means just to recruit. Uh, when I start now, I will just recruit. When you start now, you will just recruit. But you are already belittling the results you will get. You are not really magnifying the bigger picture of what you are going to get. Then to do the work will be difficult. To do the work will be extremely difficult. You see some people say, how much are they giving that I cannot get? 20,000 to recruit somebody. Ay, 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 I'm more than that, Jerry. And you will discover that the person who is getting results is somebody who does not see that 20,000. But somebody who sees that 20,000 in 10 places. Somebody will see that 20,000 in 20 places. So how big do you see the results? Or how big does the results look to you? The bigger it looks, the more motivating it will be. Am I making sense at all? If I'm making sense, I want everybody to tell me I'm making sense. The bigger the results look, the more motivating it will be. And the lesser the results look to you, the more the non-motivating it will be. Is there anyone who does not have 20,000? Is there anyone? But the simple truth is, in network marketing, it's not about the one effort. It's about the multiples effort. It's about the multiple effort. When I look at my result at the end of the month, you know, I look at my pay slip. I saw that my effort on some people, my effort on some team, what no life pay me sometimes on some people is 1,000 error. Yes, you don't know. But in network marketing, it's a principle of, you know, 1% in 100 places. 1% in 100 places will give you 100%. And that is far better than 100% in one place. Because you can never get 100% in one place. No matter how much you try. You are not God. So 1% 1 in 1,000 places will give you 1,000%. 1% in 1 million places will give you 1 million percent. That is the real power of leverage we talked about yesterday. But many people don't see it. And that is why you see a lot of people are not recruiting. That is why you see a lot of people are not doing the work. Because they see the little result on just one person. And when they want to tell you, they say, after all, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just. When you commonize the outcome, then the work can never be motivating. When you commonize the outcome, then the results, the work will never be motivating. This is some people they say, how much is it? Come and do director this month. Some people say, hey, how much is director? 150,000. Is it 150,000 I don't have? 
But you have forgotten that that director is a panakia to Sapphire. You have forgotten that Sapphire that you have to do and you have paid 300,000 is a stepping stone to Ruby. Ruby that you do and you have paid 450,000 is a stepping stone towards to four Ruby director president where you'll be earning millions. You love the millions. The million is your dream. But you are not setting the goals of how you improve that will gradually get you to the millions. You are deceiving yourself. Just the play. Are you with me, everybody? Brother, sister, if you are like that person, just the play. So when the little outcome does not motivate, then the hard work is not interesting. I'm telling you the real truth. So you really need to work on your mindset. You are where you are today because of how you commonize the outcome. How you commonize the result. We tell some people, in your life you will travel. Some you say, is it travel I've not done before? I've actually traveled several times. What's there in travel? And that is why you see those people, even if they pay registration, even if they use one million naira to start business, they will never be focused to do the work. Because they have commonized the result that should motivate them. Am I making sense at all? Am I really making sense at all? I want to be sure I'm making sense at all. So, you have to set a goal that motivates you. You have to set a goal that motivates you if you really want to succeed in business. So, motivation is key to achieving the goals. Motivation is key to achieving the goals. Now, let's move on very quickly. Set goals that relate to the high priorities in your life. Set goals that relate to the high priorities in your life. What are the priorities in your life? Without this type of focus, you can end up with far too many goals. Leaving you too little time to devote to each one. So when you don't prioritize a particular goal, what you want to achieve, you are doing so many things at the same time. You discover that you will have so many goals and at the end of the day, you will not be devoted to anyone. One of the things I try to be careful about ever since I joined this business is to be distracted. I try to be very, very careful. For a long time in this business, I try to be careful about multiple streams of income. Because if you don't know how to tailor down that motivation, it will end up misleading you. It will end up misleading you. So you have to set a goal, close goal, targeted goal, you, and you have to prioritize it. This is what I'm achieving this month. Some people are in business January, February, March, April. They never set a goal of what they will achieve. And they want to get to five diamond. Every time they are singing that song, five diamond, my day, they are the ones that will sing the most. And director, they've never done. Network marketing is not like that. Network marketing requires gradual step in a speedy direction. Gradual steps in a speedy direction. You have to keep going. You have to keep moving. You should not remain the same person you were last month. No matter how small that step is, it is a step. You have to take it. You were a senior manager last month. You are better this month as an executive manager. You are an executive manager last month. You are better this month as a director. But how can you be in business and the same title, the same level every time? Even your performance is going down. Your motivation will go down. It's because you are not setting goals. You are not setting motivating goals. The outcome is not interesting to you. Goal achievement requires commitment. So to maximize the likelihood of success, you need to feel a sense of urgency and have a, and I must do this attitude. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? That is why it is, it is labeled in red letter. Goal achievement requires commitment. Somebody type on the chat box, commitment. Type commitment. Goal achievement requires commitment. So to maximize the likelihood of success, you need to feel a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency. Urgency means I have to do it now. And I have an I must do this attitude. You have to tell yourself I must do this thing. I just must do this thing. I must take my step. I must pay for my registration. I must upgrade to deep. I just must become a director. I must take my sapphire step this month. I must become a ruby. You just have to have this I must do it attitude. Otherwise, you achieve no goal. 
You want to go to Abuja, like I said earlier. You set a goal to go through Ibadan. You told yourself you will be in Ibadan in the next one hour. In one hour, I will get to Ibadan. And you have never left your house. You woke up 7 a.m. in the morning. You said, by 8 o'clock, I will get to Ibadan. 8 o'clock, you have never left your house. And you said, Shebi Ibadan is just one hour there. 9 o'clock, you have not left your house. Shebi Ibadan is just there. 10 o'clock, you are still in Lagos. At the long run, what will happen? You will discover that the old day will go. You are going to go to Abuja, but even Ibadan, you have not gotten. And that is what happened. That by the end of the day, you not get tired. You get fed up. You get demotivated. Why? Because you are not setting the immediate goal. You say, I'm going to Abuja, but you are not seeing Ibadan before Abuja. I'm going to Five Diamond, but you are not seeing director before Five Diamond. So the big picture is always what you are thinking of, but there is no corresponding goal that is leading you in that direction. I'm really talking to some people today. As much as I want to rush this topic, I don't know, the topic is very loaded. <laughs> it's unrushable. <laughs> it's unrushable. It's unrushable. Many people frustrate themselves in network marketing because they see the big millions in network marketing, but they are never motivated to earn the earlier thousands. The earlier thousands does not motivate them. Especially those of us who have counted money before we come into this business. Before we come into network marketing. You see some people, if you believe to that 10,000, you believe to that 20,000, you believe to that 100,000, you see that 1 million in your mind, you will not get it. If you are not motivated by that 20,000, you are not motivated by that 25,000, you are not motivated by that 50,000, I tell you the real truth, that 10 million naira is just Ojulo Firi Etiopa. Just they play. So you have to be motivated by the little goals. You have the little achievements. The little things that happen. Because they are sacrosanct. There is no big dream without small goals. There is no big dream without small goals. Even God knew that you are going to spend 100 years on it. But God did not create you as an adult 100 years old person. He created you as a baby. Baby. You have to grow to age one, age two, age three, age four, age five. When you become age ten, your daddy and mommy did birthday for you. They said you have spent a decade in life. When you did 20 years, they threw another party. They said two decades. But you are going to 100 years. God knows that you are going to 100 years. But it makes you start from little. Because every day of your life is an achievement. Every month of your life is an achievement and every year of your life is an achievement. That is the same way we can achieve great success in anything we do. You have to appreciate the little win before the big wins can come. You have to appreciate it. You want to celebrate golden jubilee. You want to celebrate 70 years old, golden age. But when you are 20 years old, you are telling God, what is there 20 years old? I said, I said I'm going to 70. God, what is there in 20 years? So God will kill you. He will just kill you. <laughs> he will just say, this one is ungrateful. This one is just ungrateful. Ungrateful man be. He will just kill you, die. You don't understand. Because God expects you to appreciate that 20 years. Appreciate your 20, 30 years. Appreciate your 40 years. For you to get to 70 years. For you to get to 100 years. That is exactly the way business is. So let the little results inspire you. Let the little result motivate you. When the little result motivates you, the big result will come through the little, little result you keep getting. Are we good to go, everybody? Are we sure we are good to go? Are you with me at all? So when you don't have this, you, put, you risk putting off what you need to do to make the goal a reality. This in turn leaves you feeling disappointed. Can you hear that word? Can you see it? Let me highlight it. When... You don't do this. That is when you don't have a I must do it attitude. You don't set a sense of urgency to what you need to do. You risk putting off what you need to do to make your goal a reality. So when you don't tell yourself, I must be fully registered now. When you don't tell yourself, I must take my step and upgrade now. When you don't tell yourself, I must become a director this month. You will discover that in turn, it leaves you feeling disappointed and frustrated with yourself. That's why you see a lot of people who say, I don't even know if this business is meant for me. I don't even know everybody's growing. I'm not growing. I'm not growing. How will you grow? You will drink super grow last last. 
When they are saying you should do senior manager, you not do. Do director, you not do. Do software, you say, I got me is Ruby, I want to do. They just they play. Later, you're not saying, I don't even understand this business. I don't even understand. How will you understand? Tell me how you will understand. Why you cannot appreciate the little effort? How will you understand? I've seen a lot of people like that in this business. They will just come in and they want to aim big. You see some people, they will say, Diamond, Diamond, I'm challenging you. Six months, I'll beat you to it. You want to beat me to it in six months? I agree, no problem. Oyabe will continue. But at least become senior manager. You say, you say, no, what I'm planning is actually director. I want to do all that director at once. How much does it cost to be a director? Eh, no? Just they play. Just they do what? Just they play. You don't understand. See, big wins comes from small achievements. Big wins start with little achievements. And if you don't set urgent goal, urgent goal, you'll discover that you continue to feel disappointed with yourself. Both of which are demotivating. When you're feeling disappointed and frustrated, you see these two things, they are demotivating. And you can end up in a very destructive, I can't do it, or be successful at anything frame of mind. When you're feeling, when you can see all these things, they don't just happen. They don't just happen. And that's why when you come into business, you have to guide your mind. And the best way to guide your mind is to set little goal. Don't ever be in business without pursuing something to achieve. Don't do that. Don't just stay in business without pursuing something to achieve. I saw a quote one day. One day I was I was driving through Ikoi in Lagos. And uh, that was around Tinobu's house. And I saw some bad. You see, people don't just achieve success. They follow some principles. They follow some principles. And uh, I saw a banner. All this road banner. They put Tinobu, you know, they just wrote Tinobu's saying on it. And they said, one of Tinobu's quotes is that you cannot be a side looker in politics. You must be in to achieve something. When I saw that quote, I read it again and again. So it means even Tinobu is telling his people that you can't just be in politics and be an home looker. You are in politics, you are not aiming at something. Why jam are you? And that is the same way in business. You're in business, you're not pursuing something. You're in business, you're not pursuing that you want to achieve something. You're not setting a goal. Every little goal, every plan your leaders make with you is always too small for you to achieve. When you want to talk, when you plan with some people, at the end of the day, you sit there and say, Agami, if I achieve this thing, what will I get? And their leader say, oh, you get paid now. You get paid like 100000 like 150000 like 200000 like 300000 and you say, Ogami, that money is small. It's not encouraging for me to drive for. It's actually that one rupee I want to do. That one rupee. That one rupee. It's actually that one rupee I want to do. And they will remain there till Jesus comes. Till they quit. Till they quit. So please, let us set goals that are motivating. Let us really set goals that are very, very motivating. When your goals motivate you, when the results motivate you, the goals will motivate you. Don't ever feel too big than the result of the goal you are setting for yourself. Don't feel bigger than it. Don't feel bigger than it. So I have a tip for you very quickly to make sure that your goal is motivating. Write down why it is valuable and important to you. To make sure that your goal is motivating, write down why it is valuable and important to you. Ask yourself, if I were to share my goal with others, what would I tell them to convince them it was a worthwhile goal? Yes. So if this month you want to achieve 10 people, you want to recruit 10 people, so to make it motivating, write down why it is valuable. If you want to recruit one person per day, in the next 20 days you want to recruit 20 people, Write down why is it valuable and why is it important to you. If somebody asks you about that goal, what will you tell them? If I were to share my goal with others, what will I tell them? To convince them it was worthwhile a goal. You can use this motivating value statement to help you if you start to doubt yourself. Can you hear that? So it means when you begin to doubt yourself, you see this motivating value statement that you set for yourself. 
is what you will use to motivate yourself again when you are losing self-confidence in your ability. If you tell yourself that if I recruit 10 people, I'll get 250,000, and you set it as a goal, 250,000 in a month, different from what new life will pay me, or more, they are fantastic. So, and if I recruit 10 people and the 10 people can become deep member, I can become a director. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. So that means I will earn 250,000, I will also earn director money. Oh my God, that is amazing. Impossible, quantify that money. As a director, your life will pay you between 150,000 to 200,000. Imagine 200,000 plus 250,000 recruits that you recruit. Come on, that is 450,000. Set this goal to be motivating somewhere. If you don't keep seeing it, if you don't keep remembering it, I tell you, nothing will happen. Because when you are demotivated, when you are losing it, when you are losing belief in yourself, it is that goal that you set at one side that will keep you going. That will keep you going. Are we together, everybody? Let's move on very quickly. Number two, remember we are talking about how to set smart goals. We're talking about how to set smart goals for yourself. So number two is smart goals. Set smart goals. Don't forget that the topic we're talking about is golden rules of goal setting. The golden rules of goal setting. So goal number two now. We're talking about goal number one. You know, set goals. But when you are setting goals, it has to be smart goals. So you have to probably, add, you have probably heard about smart goals already, but do you always apply the rule the simple fact is that your goal has, for your goals to be powerful they should be designed as smart smart means they have to be specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound any goal you set for yourself has to follow this pattern a specific goal is a goal that is clear and well defined vague and or generalized goals are unhelpful when your goals are vague or they are generalized. Now you look at everybody and say, it be my day, my day. Five diamond, my day. Oh. Five diamond is a generalized goal. Before five diamond, what do you achieve first? You don't understand. What do you achieve first? So, generalized goals are unhelpful. They are unhelpful. Because they don't provide sufficient direction. Remember, you need goals to show you the way. Hey, remember what I said earlier? You need your goals to show you the way. It is when you become senior manager that you're on the way to five diamond. After senior manager, you get to director, you're still on the way to five diamond. After director, then to sapphire, you're still on the way to five diamond. But if you are not taking each of these steps, or you stop in the middle, then you are done. You are done. You are done. So remember, you need goals to show you the way. Make it easy as you can as you can to get where you want to go by defining precisely where you want to end up. By defining precisely where you want to end up. Another thing is set measurable goals. In setting measurable goals, you have to precise and put, put figures. That's how measurable goals are set. Figures. I will recruit. Not just I will recruit. Don't just say I will recruit. I want to recruit 10 people this month. 20 this month. One per day, measurable. Measurable. Two per week, measurable. Three per week, measurable. And put dates. <clears throat> I will do it before so so dates. My group point this month will come in before the end of the month of May. By 25th of May, I should have rounded up my month. You can see, you put dates. You put timing in whatever you are doing. Because if you don't do it that way, you just discover that you are not doing anything. If your goal is simply defined as to reduce expenses, what's your goal? To reduce expenses. How will you know when you are being successful? <laughs> I like these people. Is that in one month's time, if you have a 1% reduction, or in two years' time, you're, when you have a 10% reduction without a way to measure your sources, you miss out on the celebration. And comes with knowing that comes with knowing that you have actually achieved something. So imagine you just tell yourself, I want to reduce my expenses this month. Expenses about what? On how much? Is it you want to save 
you want to save 10,000 in a month? You want to save 20,000 in a month? When you tell yourself, I'm going to grow this month, I'm going to grow this month, grow to where? How do you measure growth? You measure growth in people. The number of people that come in, the number of people that stay with you. That is how to measure growth. So you have to be able to tell yourself, okay, for me to be able to measure my growth, I am going to retain so so number of people this month. So another thing is set attainable goals. We are still talking about SMART. SMART. So it has to be specific, it has to be measurable, and it has to be attainable. Attainable means make sure that it is possible to achieve the goals you set. If you set a goal that you have no hope of achieving, you will only demoralize yourself and erode your confidence. Can you hear that? When you set a goal, when you set a goal that is difficult for you to achieve, you will only demoralize yourself. You don't understand? And erode your confidence. But wait. The fact that your goal must be attainable does not mean you have to play small. That is why in the next sentence it said, however, resist the urge to set goals that are too easy. You see some people, they say, what do you want to achieve this month? They say, oh, me. I want to be realistic. Senior manager. 500 points. Group point, 1,000. Ah! And you have spent four months in business. And you are calculating group point of 4,000. Come on, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. Because it doesn't matter. The fact that you have, you have, you have crossed senior manager... It means your next goal should be director. You still plan it and work towards it. And you make sure you do everything you can to achieve it. The fact that you have done director, your next goal should be Sapphire director. You plan it and work towards it. And you do everything you can. So you don't say, eh, I don't want to, I don't want to plan what I will not do in your gummy. That is why I am saying what I don't want. Come on. Come on. There's somebody in my team last month. You know, one of those working with Miss Faith in Lagos. You know, I said, Miss Faith, plan with these people for me. I want to know what they will do. And one of them said, I'm going to do a group point of 1,000. Hey, director, director. <laughs> I want to do a group point of 1,000. When Miss Faith told me, I said, Faith, she will never do that 1,000. She will never do it. And lo and behold, as if I knew it, she ran it up 600. Yes. Because she has played small. She has planned small. She doesn't have goal. See, your actions and inactions go in, in tandem with your goals and dreams. Your actions and inactions, they go in tandem with your goals and dreams. So if your goals are not adequate, if your dreams are not adequate, your action plan will not be responsive. So, you see, this thing is not a la carte. They don't serve success a la carte. Nobody will serve success to you a la carte. You have to go out there and set a clear goal to win it. You have to set a clear goal to win it. When you look at politicians, you can see that politicians are not joking. If politicians are not joking, they do everything possible to rule you. Whether by trick or by jokes or by anything, they still rule you. Why don't you do everything to rule your life? So the fact that your goal should be achievable, realistic, measurable, does not, have to, does not mean it has to be small. The moment your goal is small, you are small. Am I making sense? If I'm making sense, somebody should just let me know I'm making sense. If your goal is small, you are small. The moment you play small in your dream, you play small in your mind, you play small in your goal, everything about you will be small. Now, look at the person that said she wants to achieve 1,000 points and she ended up achieving 600. Please tell me, how much will they pay at the end of the month? How much? So it means what you will get at the end of the month will be small because what she achieved was small and what she achieved was small because what she set as target was small what she had set as target was small because her mindset was small her dream was small everything gold hand in hand it's a sequence don't tell her any. and if this month you don't set big goals again realistic goals you discover at the end of the day nothing will still happen so accomplish a goal that you didn't have to work hard for can be 
anticlimactic at best. Anticlimactic. Anticlimactic at best. When you when you when you you want you just want to achieve it, it's easy. Ah, I have them, and they are very annoying. Before I left Lagos, there are some people I don't plan with again. What do you want to achieve? I got me, sir. 250 personal points. 250. They will not be behaving like Imbesa. You know the way Imbesa. Organize. <laughs> 250 personal points. 1,000 group points. <laughs> and you not be asking like, don't you want to succeed? Don't you want to grow? Hey, Organize. I just want to be realistic. No, it doesn't make sense. You know, and this can also make you fear certain future goals that carry a risk of non-achievement. So by being realistic, yet challenging goals, you eat the balance you need. These are the types of goals that requires you to raise the bar and they bring the greatest personal satisfaction. Team leaders, please, this training we are doing are very practical trainings. If you need to request for this material, I'm willing to share materials with you. You don't understand. So that you do these trainings again in your team level. They are very, very important. Do this training again in your team level. Because when your team members are not setting goals, they can't achieve anything. When your team members are not setting goals, they can't achieve anything. Goal setting is very, very, very important. Very important. I want to rush the training now because of our time. I'm going to be rushing the training now because of our time. But there's really, really a lot to cover. There's a lot to cover. I know some of you in your mind you say, why rush it now? We can do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is another topic on this one. <laughs> so we have to cover today's own. Tomorrow is another topic on this own. So, in the real sense, as we move on, in the real sense, as we move on, set time-bound goals. And that's another thing. Your goals have to be time-bound. Smart goals have to be time-bound. So, the T in need is time bound thank you mr lu thank you your words are encouraging your words are encouraging that's why i love you you're a very fantastic human being you know thank you thank you for letting me know that i'm trying all right set a time bound goals your goals must have a deadline again this means that you know when you can celebrate success ah. your goal must have a time bound or mountain the Ogbo dog pay before mountain. Ogbo dog pay. Ogbo dog pay before on the twenty five. What does it mean? It means you are telling yourself that as by mountain though you are celebrating your success. I want to celebrate my success by mountain. That's what you are telling yourself. Again, this means that you know when you can celebrate success when you are working on a deadline. Your sense of urgency increase and achievement will come that much quicker. So you have to set time to whatever you want to achieve. Don't just say, I want to recruit. I will recruit. Some people, when it is beginning of the month in business, they go and sleep. First week of the month, some people have gone to sleep. They go to bed. They will not resume now. They will not come on the 15th. They will not say, Agamesa. Agamesa. That is when they will not start looking for where to get leads. They will not be doing that till on the 20-something. They will not get the leads. They will not start inviting them. And they expect those people to come in and turn up for them in business. When it is now mounted, they will not say, oh, my people did not register. I don't even understand. The question is, where did you start? If the week, if the month is four weeks, you wasted the first two weeks. The first two weeks, you have not woken up. You are still saying the month just started. When the month is already over. The month is already over as it starts. The month became over. As it starts. This year has been over since the beginning. You don't know. You don't know. And that is why the way you take it will really determine what you get out of it. How do you take it? How do you take it? You need to take it more serious. If you don't take it more serious, it will not come to you on a platter of gold. So you have to set a time bound. Let me give you a tip to work with. <coughs> How can you set smart goals for yourself? Frame your goal statement positively. If you want to improve your retention rate, say, for instance, you want to re improve your retention rate. 
Kaduna people, please mute yourself as you are joining this meeting. You are joining late and you are distracting us. Kaduna people, Ola BC, mute yourself, please. Please, now, nah, please. Huh? Please. You are begging me. I've had you. All right. So, let me give you this tip, for instance. Kaduna people, invite your people to join this training. You know, I love when you guys connect to my training. There's always a lot to learn. Like I always say, invite your people. This training is for all of us. Um, let me give you this tip. When you want to look at your growth rates, start from retention. Tell yourself, I want to hold all existing partners in my business to the end of this month. I don't want to lose anybody. That's the first thing. That's the first thought of growth. I want to hold on to all existing partners in my team. Till July. Rather than I will reduce... To, no. Don't tell yourself I want to increase my points. Mm -mm. Most of the time, the point comes in the direction of your, of your retention rate. Your performance comes in the, time, in the direction of your retention rate. That's where you need to know figures. Oh, I love, I love myself for that thing. And I think Abbott too used to do that thing very well. You count numbers, numbers. How many team members do I have? You count numbers. How many did I retain? How many did I retain this month? How many shall I retain more? The PV will come in the direction of the numbers. Somebody should write it down. The PV comes in the direction of the numbers. So, you must work on retention rates. Give yourself that tip. Okay, I recruit. I have five people in my team before. I retain them. I now recruit more people to join. What will happen? The number increases. The number increases. You don't understand. The number increases. So, the first one is more motivating. When you say you want to retain people who are already existing with you. Rather you, that you say, okay, you want to reduce. No, no, no. And the second one still has a get-out clause allowing you to succeed even if some employees leave. That is, even if some partners leave you. The fact that you increase the rates and you increase the number that comes in, it means even if some people still leave, you will still have growth. That's exactly what this tip is talking about. So you don't just say, I want to grow. You are counting your numbers. That's why you can see we are doing this 21 days challenge on recruitment. We are not saying we are doing 21 days challenge on personal point. Or no. When there is recruitment in your business, there will be growth in PV. There will be growth in results. So number three, set goals in writing. Set goals in writing. So I'm going to brush it now. The fiscal act of writing down a goal makes it real and tangible. So you have no excuse for forgetting about it. As you write it, use the word will instead of would like to. No. Ha! Oh, this train is deep. This train is deep. Oh, as much as I want to rush it to some words are deep here. Yeah. Oh. The words you use, they also matter. The phrases you use matters. Instead of I would like to recruit 10 people. No. I will recruit 10 people. <laughs> so, you see that will is a command you are giving yourself. And as you say it out, you are telling your subconscious what you will do. And there will be no excuse about it. So you don't just say, I want to. There is nothing called I want to. There is nothing called I want to. It is I will. I will. I will. Or you don't even say, I might. What do you want to achieve this one? He said, I would like to be a director. Got me. No, that's wrong. The moment you use that statement, you can never be that thing. You have to be emphatic. I will be a director this month. I will. Not I might. For example, I will reduce my, my operating expenses by 10% this year. Not I would like to reduce my operating expense. No. It has to be, I will. I will. So be emphatic in what you want to achieve. 
Another thing is post your goals in visible places to remind yourself every day of what it is you intend to do. I want to recruit 10 people. I will recruit 10 people. I will recruit 20 people. Why not to write it out and paste it beside your bed? When you wake up, where you'll be seeing it every day. Your goals are to be visible, visible, visible. Set the goals, make it plain so that those who see it can read it and run with it. So you have to make your goals visible. Five diamond is the goal, is the dream. But director in the month of May, Sapphire in the month of May, I want to be an executive manager in the month of May. You must have something you are pursuing. I want to be a ruby. Ruby. Standard ruby. I want to be a one ruby. Two ruby. And when you are planning ruby, self, don't just say I want to be a ruby. One ruby. Two ruby. Be specific what you want to be. Write it somewhere. And be looking at it. When you wake up in the morning, you see it. When you want to sleep at night, you see it. Your brain will be remember, remembering what you want to do. So put them on your walls, on your desk, on your computer monitor, on your bedroom mirror, can you see, or refrigerator, as a constant reminder, where you know that as you pass by, you go past that place, Shani, and as you pass by the place you see, the thing will remind you. Number four, make an action plan. So when you have your goals, you set your goals, they are smart. You don't understand, you have written them down. The next thing is make an action plan, walk towards it. This step is often missed in the process of goal setting. So a lot of people set goals, but they don't walk towards it. You want to go to Abuja. The goal is to go through Ibadan. Then from Ibadan to Bomosho through Lokoja. You don't understand. But you have not left Lagos. And your dream is just in the dream. Your dream is just in the dream. So you have to stand up and tell yourself, don't even say, ask, is there traffic on the road? It doesn't concern you. You need to make that action plan and continue the journey. You want to build a business. You want to recruit. Stand up and go and talk to the person you want to recruit. Talk to everybody that you want to recruit. Keep talking to them as you want to recruit them. That is what action plan is. See, there is something I've learned about life. I've learned something about life. God is the rewarder of diligence. Most people get results in life. They only tried. It's only God that crowns effort. Honestly. That's one thing I've learned in life. I've learned it in life. Most of the results I've gotten is not because I'm powerful. I only made effort. I made effort. And I tell people all the time, when you make effort, God is a wonderful God. God is a, is a faithful God. He will just reward you. This God will just reward you just because you made effort. The worst thing is when you don't make effort at all. That's the worst thing. Fantastic, Ojo. If you are with me, say I'm alive. The worst thing is when you don't make effort at all. So make an action plan. Make an effort. You know, by writing out the individual steps and then crossing each one as you complete it. So when you write out all the things you want to achieve, you want to recruit 10 people. You have recruited one. Tickets. You have recruited two. Tickets. Then you will realize that you are making progress towards your ultimate goal. This is especially important if your goal is big and demanding. If I were you, go and print or go and write out on a cardboard the steps in your life. From distributor to five diamond. Go and paste it at the back of your door, you know. Go and paste it, you know. At the back of your door, you close your door. When you are coming, before you go out, you see it. The one you have achieved, ticket. If it is senior manager, you have achieved, ticket. If it is qualified senior manager, ticket. If it is executive manager, ticket. If it is director, ticket. So that you can see the one you have achieved and the one you have not achieved. No, nothing says you should not have a board at all. You should have a board where you paste your achievements. It's not too much to do. So you need to have something that you, you use to symbolize what you have achieved. If you don't have that thing you use to symbolize what you have achieved, it will just be activity, 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 producing nothing. Producing nothing. Yeah, yeah. So once you achieve a, a, a little thing, you, 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 you take it, then you go into the next thing. You take it, you go into the next thing. Then number five, stick with the goal. 
stick with the goal. So remember, we're talking about five-step formula, goal-setting formula. Remember, goal-setting is an ongoing activity. It doesn't end. So people will say, after that, I've done director. I've done director. After director now, maybe there's nothing else again. No. You still have to keep setting goals again and setting goals again and setting goals again. Not just a means to an end. Build in reminders to keep yourself on track and make regular time slots. Make what? Let regular time slots for yourself. Available to review your goals. Your end destination may remain May, may remain quite similar over the long term, but the action plan you set for yourself along the way can change significantly. Make sure the relevance, the value, and the necessity remain high. The relevance, the value, and the necessity remain high. When you have achieved a goal, set another goal to achieve another goal. Don't just take a step and stop. Some people will come to business, they take their first step, they will just stop. No! You become director, you stop. You become sapphire, you stop. You become one ruby, you stop. What happened to you? What happened to continuity? What happened to, to you keep setting growth to remain relevant in business? And this is how you can continue to achieve greater deals for yourself. The next training I'm going to talk about, which I actually focus on, is what are the six habits you need to develop that will help you build your mental strength? I discovered that a lot of Nigerians don't have adequate mental strength. And that is why you discover that a lot of people cannot set goals. Mentally, some people are not okay. Mentally, some people are not okay. You know, most times when you want to, let's say for instance, you want to employ somebody on a job. Or you want to bring in somebody into your business. Okay, let me ask you a question. If you want to bring somebody to your business... If the person is um, physically deformed, it takes the grace of God for you to see beyond that deformity. For you to say, no, no matter the matter, I will work with you. Why? Because the appearance is what you are judging with. But there are a lot of people, they look physically okay, but mentally they are not okay. And if I make, I tell you the truth. Most of those people, most of those people you see in Nigeria are not mentally okay. And that is why you discover because when people are not mentally okay, they are not emotionally okay, that's why they cannot set goals and achieve goals in business. Many of us seated here today in business, listening to me in this training, you know what I'm saying. You know, you know. It'd be like saying something wrong with you. You know. Today you are happy, tomorrow you are not happy. You know. You yourself, you know. And let me tell you something. Anybody who is not mentally okay cannot achieve success. Anyone who is not mentally okay cannot achieve success. But before we go into these six habits, there is a woman who came into business last month and she did exceedingly well. She recruited minimum of three people into her business. Okay, I think she came in in March, till end of March. You know, she was paid 50,000 naira from DD Africa. And last month, she went ahead. She recruited three people to join her team. She was paid 60,000 naira recruitment, sponsors reward. You know, she went ahead. You know, she upgraded her members. She was paid 75,000 naira deep reward again. And um, she ran it up the month as an executive manager. And I was told that New Life paid her over 70,000 naira. Within a pace of not up to two months now. So it means this woman has earned over 200 and something thousand in the organization. It's no doubt. She must have set a goal for herself. And I really want her to really talk to us. How did she set these goals for herself? How did she really correct her mental self when she came into business? As a new person, I know there's always a time your mind is playing pranks on you. And your mind is asking you if you can do this. Or your mind is telling you to give up. How did she overcome the mindset? And she was able to set focus to a point that she's getting results in business. And that's why at this junction, everybody, join me to welcome, to share her story with us. And she will start with what she was doing before she joined this organization. 
and what she what inspired her to get started and what inspired her to keep going because getting started is not as important as keeping going and how does she set goals for herself how does she recruit the people she has recruited how does she talk to them how does she convince them mrs victoria Fuakwe, please we would like to hear from you good evening madam how are you doing please God bless my diamond. God bless you, ma. How are you, ma? I'm fine. God bless my excellency. God bless my ruby. God bless my my iron lady. God bless my mentor. God bless all the leaders in the house. Good evening, everyone. I started, I joined this business not up to two months. Let's say six weeks now. In fact, when I came in, I paid my franchise just once and I started. I think everybody can hear me. We can hear you clearly, loud and clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I paid my franchise and upgraded to. They asked me which one I want to do. I said the two. Ah, they said, wow, fantastic. So, in that, uh, when I upgraded to deep, I saw a lot of 50,000. Ah, wow. Okay. Getting 50,000, uh -uh. in this business, I need to put more effort. So, I started recruiting. Talk to people that ah, this business is, is paying no. It's not like the other or one other uh, the other ones that we have been doing because we have done a lot. It's not like that one. No. This one, I first I I enter this place. I was paid fifty thousand cash. Ah, people were motivated. So when they get motivated, I when we have sessions. On that Saturday that we have in Adopta, I, I sent a message to group, my, my secondary school group, groups like that, personal message I sent to them. On that day, I saw two people signing in. They signed in, and I was rewarded. Even they, they celebrated me that day for getting 50000 Everybody was amazed. They 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 did they, they they were they 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 were they they liked it. It was fantastic. Mm. So that day that two people signed in, they signed up. So after that they invited them to to session to come and do induction. They were there, they asked them what they would do. I I I advised them that they should do this too. Mm. And which they they accept it. Mm. But unfortunately, the first person that did uh, the two, the second person also wants to do the two. But uh, the cash something, he was unable to do the two. So that person did the this one. Mm. So to God be the glory, as I now, as I'm talking now, my what I have collected from. Uh, DG Africa and everything is almost 300,000. Wow. wow. I even got a lot yesterday. Wow. A lot of uh, 77,000 something. Wow. For this uh, month and a new life. Wow. So, I, even my, uh, oh, those people under me also, they have started uh, collecting money. Hmm. So, uh, apart from the three n that I have with me, that one is almost 700,000. Mm. So, and I know that I'm still going to, I will still, I will still sell. I will, I will, I will go for, uh, uh, have something and they will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will get my money from them. So, what I want to say now is that everybody, if you are still there, thinking that this thing is a scam, it's not a scam. Please, let us pay. Pay up and see what is going to happen. If you pay up, you see what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm pleading, I'm, I'm imploring everyone that are here 
right now that are still thinking they, they are still going to be their thing. You take that action now by time A. You action. Take action. Pay your franchise. Start, start your business. Start your business and recruit more people. Hmm. I'm still trying to recruit. Hmm. I still call somebody today to, to join my team, but that person said he is expecting money. So I know by tomorrow that person will come in hmm. as another uh, as another uh, uh, down time downline. Hmm. So I'm imploring everybody to join the team. This thing is viable. It's viable. So let us let us put effort, more effort. As I will, I will give kudos to my, to my iron lady, the, the, the my, the, my diamond, my excellency, and everybody. Let I will give kudos to them. My mentor, they are always on my name. Do this, do that, do that, do that. So and that those things are paying. If I do it, I see the results. So God bless my diamond. Thank you very much, you. Mrs. Afuakwe. That those are motivating words. You can see she's counting all her blessing and everything. Even her product gifts, she's calculating it that this thing too is money. You don't understand. She's making money from DD Africa, making money from New Life. At the same time, she's calculating how she will make money from presentation as well. That is how to stay motivated. When you look at the end result, you magnify the end result. You let the end result motivate you. You don't believe to any. Look at within a place of one month, she has earned close to two three hundred thousand naira. Within a place of one month, so if she now continue at this pace in two months, in three months, in five months, in ten months, what will not happen? What will not happen? You know, and look at it as a new person. She went ahead. She's encouraging people, encouraging our people. Take step, become deep. When you set goals for yourself and you know what you want to achieve, you work towards it. But to me, I believe that it takes a, 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 a mental stability to be able to work things right. So at this juncture, I want to quickly talk about mental stability. I want to talk about mental stability. Mental stability. I want to talk about mental stability. How to give yourself a mental stability. Six habits that will help you build your mental strength. Everybody, are you good to go? If you are good to go, give me a thumb up. If you are good to go, give me a thumb up. If you are not setting goals in this business, or more, it means the person gets mental problem. Oh. Maybe something is wrong with the person. Maybe the person is going through emotional issue. Anybody who is not working towards success in this business, you are in business and you are not working towards anything, then something is wrong with you some way. So how can we solve, You can you solve that problem? So that it doesn't affect your results. That is where your mental strength comes in. So very quickly, let's go, guys. Physical fitness gets a lot of attention. And for good reason, good physical health can prevent conditions such as heart disease or diabetes. And it can help you maintain a long, independent life. But often, it is neglected. It is often neglected. It is often neglected. So what does it mean? It means as good as physical health is, many a times we neglect our physical health and our physical health ended up affecting our mental health. And to be candid, if you are sick in the body, you cannot be sound in the mind. Which makes it important that you should take care of yourself. You should take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Do exercise. Stop a sedentary lifestyle. Let me tell you something. Something happened to me yesterday. Yesterday, some, someone pissed me off. And the person got me very angry. And I was angry for a long time. And do you know that while I was angry, I was trying to do something on Canva. Just very simple thing. Just very simple thing. I was trying to do it on Canva. And do you know that I spent over an hour with that thing. I could not find the bearing. Because I was mentally not okay. Emotionally, I was affected. And do you know what I did? I just closed the laptop. I went for a walk. 
And by the time I came back from that walk, I sat with the laptop again. Within, within three minutes, that thing I battled with for over one hour, I did it. What I battled with for over one hour, I did it. So what does it mean? It means there's a way your emotional self, your mental self affects your results in everything you do. And that's exactly what we are talking about here. If you don't know how to deal with your emotional self, you don't know how to deal with your mental self. Oh my, now so 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 story story. Oh. Now so so complain, now you go to give. Oh. I'm telling you the real truth. So a strong person is not that person who is strong physically. A strong person is that person who knows how to be strong mentally. Who knows how to be strong mentally, psychologically. That's where we are now. That's where we are now. So, and this helps you maintain a long independent life. But often legated is mental fitness. So, many at times, we put effort in physical fitness, but we neglect our mental fitness. Having a healthy and a strong mind to allow you to undo the challenges an opportunity that life puts in front of you. You know? And to help you to, uh, uh, to, to harness and focus the, on the challenges that life puts in front of you. So at this junction, if you need to screen record, put your phone on screen record now. I want you to record this part of the training. Very, very important. Put your phone on screen record now. I want you to record this part of the training. Very, very important. Very, very important. Put your phone on screen record. I want you to record this part of the training. Very, very important. Very important. Don't ask me for the video. Put your phone on screen record. All right. Now, what is the importance of a fit mind? When I say mind is fit, what is the importance? A common thought is that the absence of mental health disorder means that a person is mentally fit and emotionally well. <laughs> a common thought is that when somebody is not in Naru, when the person is not in Igbo, uh, Yaba left, when the person is not in psychiatric hospital, we assume that that person is mentally fit. Miss Faith, are you okay? I'm sure you are mentally fit. Miss Faith, I'm sure you are mentally fit. Very sound. God bless you. Now, but it's wrong. The fact that you see somebody going on the streets, the fact that somebody joined your team, the fact that somebody is in your business, does not mean that the person is mentally fit. According to Rachel O'Neill, a licensed professional clinical counselor, he said that is a dangerous misconception to assume that because somebody looks fit, the person is fit upstairs. <laughs> he said an individual can certainly experience period of stress. So it means the fact that somebody is your guy does not mean the person cannot undergo stress. Yesterday when I was angry, Miss Faith called me. The way I attended to herself, the way I responded to her, even she herself, she knew something was wrong. Later, I had to call her and send her message. Sorry. Sorry for the way I responded. The thing just do me some up. I didn't say you should share your screen, Joanne. We don't need your screen. No. We have our screen to share here. Just do your own screen, screen, screen record. That's what you need to do. Do your own screen record. Your own screen record is okay for you. So that you can record whatever is happening through your screen. So what does it mean? It means every human being go through a moment of stress. Every man being go through a moment of discomfort. Every woman being goes through a moment of sadness. Every woman being goes through a moment of anxiety. Without necessarily meeting criteria for a mental health disorder. The fact that somebody is angry for five minutes does, that mean, does not mean he's mad now. The fact that somebody is stressed for a little while does not mean he's mad now. But the question is, if the person does not know how to overcome that moment, he will not be able to do anything successfully for that moment. And if you're a kind of person, you don't know how to snap out of your situation as quick as possible. You don't know how to train yourself to be mentally sound. You're hungry for days. For one week, you are going through mental stress, post-traumatic stress disorder. For one week, you are depressed. You don't even know what is wrong with you. Or more than one week, it has been stolen away from you. The first one week, two weeks of the month, you don't even know what is happening. You have not even gotten yourself because last month was not good. Or more. 
Wait till they last month has gone. <laughs> last month has gone. So mental wellness is a process. And just like physical health, it is an ongoing process to maintain mental and emotional wellness. Mental wellness is an ongoing process to maintain mental and physical wellness. So physical wellness. Unsurprisingly, trying or stressful times can be the ultimate test of your mental fitness. Unsurprisingly, your trying time, your trying time can be the ultimate test of your mental fitness. What do you do in your trying time? What do you do in your trying time? When you are winded by a major life event, being able to recover quickly requires significant mental strength and psychological resilience. You don't know how strong a man is until he goes through tires. So if you are a kind of person, you don't know how to train yourself to withstand mental stress, to overcome mental and psychological challenges on time, it's going to steal your joy. It's going to steal your joy. It will make success look very difficult. Am I making sense at all? It will make success look very difficult. It doesn't mean you will not go through that stress. It doesn't mean everything will be rosy at all times. But the ability to be strong over your situation. You don't let situations control you. Be the one to control your situation. That is where you can really say that you are in charge of your, of your mental health. That is where you can really say you are in charge of your mental health. If you are with me, say I'm alive. Let's get going. The benefit of being mentally fit means... We are able to use our mental abilities. The benefit of being mentally fit means we are able to use our mental abilities to our fullest extent, allowing us to be more creative, make the most of opportunities as well as they present themselves and approach stressful situations more calmly with less anxiety. Can you hear that now? The benefit of mental fits, of being mentally fit, means you are able to use your mental ability to its full extent, allowing us to be more creative, make the most of opportunity as they present themselves, and approach stressful situation more calmly with less anxiety. With less anxiety. So everybody needs to be mentally okay if you want to succeed on the journey of network marketing. Now, so what can you do to increase your mental fitness level? What can you do to increase your mental fitness level? Get yourself a pen and paper. Or make sure you are screen recording. Number one, focus on one thing at a time. I like this. Focus on one thing at a time. Otherwise, you will be stressed out. Focus on one thing at a time. Somebody came to me one day and the person said, Mr. Daly, I don't believe that this business is what you have done to make money for over 10 years. I said, what else will I do? I've not done anything else aside this business for over 10 years. For over 10 years. And after 10 years, I am still doing this business. Nothing else. Focus on one thing at a time. Focus on one thing at a time. Look at, from this picture, you can see. Your road is clear when it is well, when there is boundaries. You set boundaries. Even you, you'll be able to walk on a clear path. But imagine there is no boundary. Um, <laughs> you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this. At the long run, you'll not be able to set any goal for yourself. Look at this thing they call multitasking. I've said it before. Multitasking is a scam. <laughs> If care is not taken, multitasking. Some people say, I can multitask. I'm doing many things at the same time. Ah, a light, a light. We're well, light, a light. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Is anybody on this meeting with me at all? Are you sure you're on this meeting with me? You are multitasking. That's why you are distracted. 
there's this general saying they say a woman can do many things at a time but men they can only focus on one thing at a time that's why women are more powerful than men and you to you carry that on your head ha ah, one point just the play just the play how many women do you see who is okay in the in, in the rate of success everywhere you always see women trail behind men no matter how multitasking they can be always trailing behind men a woman can get it right in the beginning so quickly. But because women easily get distracted because they are multitasking. But a man who can set focus, a man who can set focus, will get to the top, will remain at the top, and a woman who get to the top can even stay calm down because she's multitasking. Focus on one thing at a time. There are a lot of things that the world used to say that it is a deceit. They say ah, women are powerful, you can do many things at the same time. Some people will tell you you have to know how to do many things at the same time. Even this is your business, especially when families want to discourage you. They will say, this is your business. Can't you do another thing with it? <laughs> oh my God, my God, my God. They want to give you mental disorder. <laughs> is there anybody here? Somebody has suggested it to you. That you should do something with this your business. Let me see your hands up. Somebody has suggested it to you. They want to give you mental disorder. <laughs> and that is the reason why a lot of people have lost focus. Because there's no way you can balance your mental self by multitasking. You want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this. No! Focus. Focus. When you focus, every other thing will fall into shape. So multitasking can be a deceit. It can really be a deceit sometimes. Before Dangote, before you can start creating many companies like Dangote, focus on one and build it well first. Multitasking is one as a badge of honor. But multitasking too, <laughs> too much is not healthy. Can you see that? Multitasking too much is not healthy. Why you multitask? People will say, ah, the guy is good. He can do many things at the same time. Okay. You wear the badge of honor. But it's not healthy. Practice being present. Practice being present. When you are taking a walk, take it in your surrounding. The weather, the birds. When you are spending time with friends, really listen to what is being said. Turn off your phone. Try to forget the running to-do list in your head. What is it? What is this author trying to say? They're trying to say that you should focus your mind at one thing at a time. That's one of the ways to maintain a healthy mental health. A healthy mental health. When you are in your business, do your business well. When you are a way out of your business, whatever you are doing, you can't honor your business. And other things are together at the time. You have to clear your mental space. You cannot carry many things into it at the same time. I don't know if I'm communicating. Any Oliver can be like say this train is too deep today. It'd be like say this train is too deep today. So multitasking is good, but you have to be available for yourself. You have to be present for yourself all the time. Number two, set aside a time to move your body. Don't be too sedentary. Move your body. Move your body. Go up, go down, do things. Move your body. Move your body. Like medicine. Everybody pay attention here. Like medicine in the treatment of mental health illness. Exercise can increase levels of serotonin, ser serotonin dopamine, and norepinephrine in the brain. Exercise can increase your level of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine in the brain. It, inv it improves and normalizes neurotransmitter levels. That is, when you exercise, your anxiety level reduces. Your depression level reduces. 
your excitement level increases. Your focus level increases. Your goal setting levels increases. Which ultimately helps us, help us feel mentally healthy. So if we're talking about goal setting, goal setting, goal setting, and you are not mentally fit, we just they deceive ourselves. You need to put your mind together, body, soul, and spirit. Other important benefits include enhanced mood and energy, reduced stress, deeper relaxation, improved mental clarity, learning, insight, memory, and cognitive functions. Enhanced intuition, creativity, assertiveness, and enthusiasm for life and improve social health and relationship. So you need to be body. Somebody say be body. Somebody say be body. So you need to be body. Be active. Number three thing you need is give yourself daily mindfulness break. Daily mindfulness break means you should read and assimilate something that will, that will enhance your mind. That will enhance your mind. Just one week of brief daily mindfulness meditation practice has been found to produce significant improvement in attention, energy, and stress. Research shows that these benefits are more than just subjective. Participants of study experience actual decrease in self-control cortisol and improvement in their immune system. Why? Because you are enhancing yourself with meaningful things. Kawei joint training that is where this kind of training comes in something that enhances your mind it helps to enhance your level of thinking it also helps to boost, boost immune system so they also displayed improved visual partial processing working memory and executive functioning important set of mental skills that help you to get things done faster can you hear that now so take your time to meditate mindfulness break you need to take time to be with yourself. You read something all alone. You assimilate. You think. You meditate. Spend time with yourself. Where you can actually understand yourself. You can actually reason your mind. It goes a long way. It goes a what? A long way. Number four. Carve out self-care time. Carve out self-care time. How well do you take care of yourself? How often do you take care of yourself? How often do you even take yourself out to relax? How well do you... How, when last did you even take yourself on a massage? Relax and renew massage is coming. I hear that one now. I know you hear that one. When last did you take yourself out to even calm yourself out? One of my greatest secrets... In this business is this one this one time for self-care if you don't give time to self-care the stress will kill you stress will kill you so you need to give yourself time for self-care time for self-care give yourself an afternoon or evening to engage in something that you genuinely enjoy doing it can be exercising, it can be reading, it can be binge watching your favorite show. Especially, make a date with yourself. Ah, I love this. A date with yourself. Make a date with yourself to do something fun that's just for you. Is there a fantasy in your head? Come on, girl. Boy, go and enjoy your fantasy. You must have a phone. You must have a place of phone in your head. You must have something in your head. Take yourself out and enjoy that thing. I was talking to one of my girls in Lagos and she was telling me, Baba, I'm planning to take myself out. Only me and myself alone. See, let me tell you something. If you are too much in the company of people, every time you are in the company of people, you are in the company of people, you will not even have time to understand yourself. Sometimes take yourself out. Take a walk alone. Where you get mindful of yourself. Go somewhere. Take care of yourself. Joko, buy yourself a bottle of drink. Buy yourself something. Reason alone. Somebody else does not have to buy it for you all the time. All the time. Pay, go and pay for a massage session. Pay for a therapy session. Go for painting. Go for something that will calm you. 
That is how you can keep your focus. Then number five, set limits and stick with them. Set limit and stick with them. Me, I love this part very well. Setting boundaries with yourself is an essential form of self-care. We live in a world that is driven by sources. We, live, we are in a business that is driven by sources. And you know, all of these things have advantage. You are in Lagos. Everything is bozo. Every time, traffic, everything, things are too busy. But you see, as much as this thing is driving, as much as our business is success driven, all of these things also have disadvantage, like burnout. It makes you wear out sometimes if you don't know how to, how to balance it, how to get time for yourself, how to set boundaries. Which in the real concern when you are trying to have it all, a fulfilling career, an Instagram worthy time with friends, and a happy family. You want to have a fulfilling career, you want to have time with your friends online, on Facebook, on social media, on Instagram, on WhatsApp. You want to chat and chat. The time you want to spend with yourself is the time you are spending with all of these things. And you want to have a happy family. Family is there, you want to spend time with them and the likes. Remember that it's okay to say no sometimes. You can switch off your phone sometimes. You can even block some people who are giving you a headache. You can block them. Anyone you know that is going to give you a dick, block them. You don't understand. Even if you care for those people for so much, you can set a boundary. You can even decide to switch out your phone and stay out of Instagram. Stay out of Facebook for a while. It's not too much for you to set a boundary. To an extent that is possible, set boundaries within your professional and personal life. So that you are not overextending yourself. So that you are not overextending yourself. Then number six. Which is the sixth habit you have to develop. If you really want to maintain a mental fitness. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. And I know this is where a lot of people have problems. This is where a lot of people have problems. When things are not going well for people, especially team members, downline, many of us listening now, today, that is when many of you, you are supposed to reach out for help, but that is when many of you, you stay out. When some people want to talk, they will say, ah, I cannot call my ogre now. My ogre will abuse me just because you are not doing well. No. That time you are not doing well. That time you are not, that time you are not setting your goals. That time you are not achieving your goals. It's the time you should connect to your leaders the most. That time it looks as if things are not working. It's the time you should connect to people that can help you more. Staying out of help will complicate your problem. So sometimes you just need to be around people that understand what you are going through. You need to just stay around people. Not people that over, over give you privilege. But people that have gone through what you have gone through before. People that give you an healthy vibe. And that's why to succeed in life, there are people you need to have in your cycle. People that gives you excitement. People that give you motivation. And if you have anyone in your cycle who is not giving you excitement, please stay away. If you have family members that are not giving you excitement about your journey, your career path, you, you came from work, you got home, another problem, homo, stay away from such places. Stay away from toxic environment. Stay away from toxic places. Toxic people. So if you need to cry for help at that junction, please cry for help let somebody help you a sympathetic ear or the presence of someone we can trust can help prevent or at least ease feelings of isolation i'll take it again a sympathetic ear or the feelings of someone we can trust can help prevent or at least ease feeling of isolation alienation and rumination I'll take it again for the last time. A sympathetic ear or the presence of someone we can trust can help prevent 
or at least is. I'm not saying you should go and look for somebody you can trust out of business. So you're having business challenge. Don't go and look for somebody you can trust outside you. Because if the person does not understand what you are going through, the advice will be contrary. But when you have somebody you can trust around you, it will help you ease the feelings of isolation. I mean, you as there are many times I call people in Nigeria and I tell them I just want to be talking. I just want to talk to somebody. And I will be talking, 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 talking. All of this is sympathetic ear. Somebody who can listen to you will help you to ease the feeling of isolation. Sometimes when you feel you are alone in the world, you are the only one going through the challenge and the problem you're going through. It can drain. Knowing you have a trustworthy network of people to, to turn to can. Ah, this is what I love the most. And there's nothing as fulfilling as this. When you know you have a network of people that are trustworthy and that you can turn to anytime. This will help you to improve your ability to deal with stress and anxious feelings. When you have a network of people you can trust and you can turn to when you have problems, it will help you to improve your ability to deal with stress and anxious feelings. It will help you to boost your self-esteem self and your social skills. And the best person at this junction is your team leader. Res responsible team leader and team member who are successful. And team member who are successful. There are many times I call Lagos and I speak with Mr. Lu for a long time. Talk, 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 talk. There are many times I call Miss Blessing. We talk, talk, talk. There are many times I call Mr. Abbott. We talk, 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 talk. There are many times I call Miss Fatih. We talk, 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 talk. There are many times Miriam. We talk, 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 talk. Why? Because it has its own role it plays in helping you to ease your stress and anxious feelings. At this junction, I want to believe we've had a lot of training today. And I want to believe that at the end of this training, we now know how to set goals and how to be mentally fit. How fantastic has been today. <laughs> hey. Have you learned something at all? If you have learned something, let me see your thumb up. Let's start from there. If you have learned something today, let me see your thumb up. Only Mr. Abbott learned massage. It's only massage that he learned. But if you have learned something today, let me see your thumb up. Can we bombard the chat box? Let's talk about what we have learned. What have you really learned today? Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. What have you learned today? Has today's training been meaningful? Has today's training been impactful? What have you learned? Keep it short and simple. Let's just look at what you have learned all together. Let's look at what you have learned all together. Keep it coming, everybody. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Make it short and simple. Don't make it long. When it is too long, we will not be able to read it. So make it short and very simple. Make it short and very simple. Make it short and very simple. Somebody said, too much of multitasking is unhealthy for mental stability. God bless you. God bless you, Tolu. God bless you. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. Too much of multitasking. You are a man. You have plenty of girlfriend. You want to balance it with this one. Balance, balance this one. Balance this one. What time do you have for yourself? You are a woman. You have plenty of boyfriend. You talk to this one a little. You talk to that one a little. You have to talk. What time do you have for yourself? You don't understand. You are doing this business and you are multitasking and believing that you can do another thing. Come on now. You won't be able to keep your focus. You won't be able to keep your focus. You won't be able to keep your focus. And distraction, they say, is deadlier than discouragement. You know? Somebody said, I learned I have to focus on one thing at a time. Set goals that motivate you. Yeah, that's another person. Another person said, seek help. I've been bola bola to seek help in your leadership. Seek help in people who have gone through what you have gone through before. Let your leadership be part of the network that helps you overcome your mental instability. 
You don't understand. See, Max Limited says self control and massage. <laughs> this must be our board's team member. This C Max Limited must be our board's team member. All right. Another person said, I learned that you must have a time for meditation to improve yourself. That's the truth. Another person said, I learned that I should create time for myself. Me time. You know, I love that word. Me time. It's very, very important. Another person said, Jack of all trade, a master of nothing. Mrs. Olutoki said, in cases of mental depression, you can run to your leader who is successful in business. Yes, they've been able to subdue that mental stress. So they know what to tell you. If you run to your family member who have not gone through similar mental stress before, they will tell you to sit down. Don't do anything again. If I, and that is even worse. But your leaders who have gone through similar mental stress before, they will easily tell you what they did to overcome it. And it goes a long, a long, long way. A long, long way. It's no doubt that today's training has been fantastic. Somebody said, I learned to do things one after the other to achieve a reasonable result. Whenever you are down, you go up. God bless you. You go to your leader. Whenever you are down, you go up. Whenever you are down, you go up. Don't keep going down. If you are down, don't keep going down. When you are down, you go up. Carry the problem to your leader. They will solve it. You don't understand. You go Even if you want to cry, go and cry on the shoulder of your leader. Sometimes it's good to cry. There's only somebody like me that I don't have somebody I can, I can be crying to. <laughs> but if you want to cry, it's allowed. Go and cry on the shoulder of your leader. Cry very well. You know, if you cry well, 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 you feel lifted. You feel lightened at the end of it all. So we've had a wonderful training today. I really want us to go and look into what we have done today. So far, so good. You know, go and ruminate over it. Go and relearn it. Go and meditate on it. You know, understand. On how to become a better person so that you can set goals. You can meet your target of recruitment. Recruitment is the secret of the business. So that you can get people into your business. You can grow as quick as you can. Remember when you recruit anybody into your business, you get 20,000 naira. Aside 20,000 era, you get free 11 PV. Aside the free 11 PV, you get extra product, magnesium complex. Your personal point is already being taken care of little by little. What if you now recruit 10? What if you now recruit 20? And this thing is doable. Go on the street and talk to everybody. But your mental health must be okay to be able to do it. You don't understand. And at the same time, you must be able to set cool, clear and precise goals that will help you to achieve a lot for yourself. It's been a wonderful training and I want to say thank you for joining this meeting.